Hello, good morning. You're watching Sky News Today with me, Jane Secker. It's 10 o'clock. These are the headlines. Ceasefire Rao, a Labour minister, quits over his leader's position on the war, heightening pressure on Sir Keir Starmer's stance. Our top story this morning, divisions in the Labour Party. 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 So, Keir, would you accept that this issue is tearing your party apart? Labour's front bench mutiny over Starmer's Middle East policy. Oh, no! Imran Hussein resigns, demanding Starmer backs a ceasefire. Wait, wait, wait. So, so it's just one guy? It's a huge blow for Starmer, and anyone following suit would be catastrophic for Labour. This is what they mean when some of my contemporaries, my peers, say that the Conservative Party get to play politics on easy mode. And this is what I mean when I say you have to look at Labour scandals and problems with the Labour Party through a sort of dog years to human years kind of prism. Because none of the Defence Secretary or the Home Secretary or even the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, none of them are backing a ceasefire. But you're seeing any sort of cameras and microphones in the faces of the actual government? Like, well, what's your stance? Do you back the bombing campaign? Oh, why, why aren't you backing a ceasefire? I can't remember the last time I saw Shaps on the morning rounds and Rishi Sunak is too busy batting his eyelashes to Elon Musk. And if you want an even more stark example, cast your mind back to that whole Labour anti-Semitism period. I think they fired or suspended a grand total of like seven or eight MPs. In fact, not even MPs. Like some of them were like councillors. Some of them were like support staff. But how was that reported at the time? It was like Labour has an anti-Semitism problem. It's rife. It's endemic. Now you've got to contextualise it with the human years to dog years stuff, right? So seven or eight staff members getting sacked, then it's rife. It's endemic. The Conservative Party have had how many suspensions for sexual assault and rape now? Parrish, Roberts, Khan, Warburn, Pincher, Crispin Blunt, Peter Bone, Charlie Elphick, Andrew Griffiths. Oh, and... Julian Knight. And that's just the ones I can think of, like, off the top. They're relatively recent. Imagine about, like, the four or five years ago ones, or the ones that haven't been named yet. But does anybody go on record at the BBC or Sky News or Twitter or wherever and then start suggesting that the Conservative Party have a rape problem? Any big announcements from the Conservative Party, like action plans to drive rape? out of the Tories? No, of course not. They're very much seen as a few bad apples that somehow miraculously do not spoil the barrel. This is what I mean, like when there's a problem with Labour, whether it's a few MPs behaving poorly or just one resignation, it is seen as either characteristic of the entire party or some sort of existential threat. The frenzy is never replicated when it happens in the opposing Conservative Party. Like you could have a Tory front bencher resign right now in protest of the British state's support of Israel's bombing campaign. Like it would just be reported as, uh, oh, he's taken a principled stance and we respect that, but, uh, Anyway, business as usual.